back to some very, very key questions that Christians have to ask themselves. We call these soul-searching questions that need to be answered. You can only ask yourself this. These are moral things. This is within. Your conscience comes from God. So when something is not morally correct, now that's something that not the courts nor anybody else can dictate to you. If a man believes something is morally wrong and he proceeds against his conscience, he's sinning against the Spirit of God. Because only the decision between right and wrong comes from God. Clarified in the rule book, God's Word. So, can a Christian be involved in what is called a legal fiction? What is a fiction? Well, we'll look it up. Samuel Johnson's Dictionary, 1755, and I'm sure you can find this in more modern dictionaries also. Let's look up the word fiction. The act of feigning or inventing a falsehood a lie. Well, that's a hard one. So, is it okay for a Christian to be involved in a legal fiction? No, we're not supposed to be liars. Okay, what does God hate the most? Liars. Who is the father of the lie? Satan. Do you think Satan would have a lying name attached to your name? Satan would, for sure. So, when Adam and Eve ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, maybe they picked up a little bit of fiction in the way. Now, could the surname be a legal fiction? Well, I'm going to bring you to Black's Law Dictionary, and this is where, hopefully, me speaking slowly in this part of the video will help you understand how the law views what a fiction is. And so you understand that if you're involved in it, they're at least telling you what it is. So what is a fiction according to the law? Okay, so we're just going to look up Black's Law Dictionary. This is the actually fourth edition. I'm sure it's in the third. I'm sure it's in the fifth. I'm sure it's in the eighth. So we're going to look up fiction. Okay, well, we'll go to fictio. That's the root of the word fiction. In Roman law, a fiction, an assumption or supposition of the law. Fiction, an assumption or supposition of the law that something which is or may be false is true. Well, what's a fictitious name then? Because that's the automatic thing I'm going to go to. If I'm using a name right now, what could be possibly categorized as a fictitious name? Very unique definition here under fictitious name. A counterfeit, feigned or pretended name taken by a person differing in some essential particular, particular, a particular is a part, so something is different than something that's particular, and a given name is a real name. When you take on an additional name or a surname, that's something added on to the real name. We have many, many videos in the past that went in. Hopefully, if we have to reiterate this and bring them back, we have dictionary definitions showing that the given name is the real name and a surname is a name added to the real name, which therefore would cause us to come to a conclusion that the surname isn't real and that the given name is real. Hmm, maybe that's Israel. <laughs> Israel? <laughs> that's another one by chance. <laughs> Fictitious name, a counterfeit feigned or pretended name taken by a person Differing in some essential particular from his true name. Then in brackets, consisting of a Christian name and a patronymic. So you would require to have a fictitious name. You'd have to have your given name or Christian name 
attached to a family name. And the two together make up the fictional name. Yes. So, in order to have a fictitious name, you have to have a given name attached to the family name. It's not having to do with the fact that there is some kind of feigned use of a given name and, a, and that there could be truth to a family name. No, they're saying that a fictitious name consists of your Christian name attached to what is considered to be a family name. Now you've got a fictitious name. Because truth is a given. So therefore, that's the fact. And your given name is the only thing that your parents gave you. Because they believed that you could have a surname. Well, in law, mere belief can misrepresent a fact. So when you say the two names together, you're misrepresenting, you're misrepresenting what was real with something that is now fiction. And because you've done it and said it, it now becomes a fact and therefore will be held against you. Everything you say can and will be held against you or used against you in a court of law. Not may, will be used against you. So when you walk into the court and you say you are that surname, you just said you're the surety for that fiction. And because that represents arms, title, money, Let's not forget Matthew 6 and 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Mammon being the Greek god of money. Well, if you cannot, didn't say may not, cannot. There's a Latin maxim that a spiritual man cannot be involved in secular matters. Cannot. Clearly, their laws are stating that. Their maxims are stating that. So where do we get mixed up in this? Is that adulterous? Is that basically entering into a third party? Did you mingle something in? If you were part of the body of Christ, could you be involved in mammon? Can you mingle in with something that is contrary to that position without that being adulterous? No, you cannot. We hope at this point that this part of the video is clear and concise and bringing you to the reasoning from the scriptures. You reason from this, it'll be clear. Yes, it will not be convenient because the convenience part goes out the door when truth comes in. Because the majority of the people around you are doing the wrong thing. Therefore, you will be very inconvenient with truth around fiction. Truth doesn't work in fiction. Did we make that clear? Truth, your given name, doesn't work in fiction unless you make it work and then you become the fiction. There's a Latin maxim that says fiction yields to truth where there is truth, fiction of law exists not. So don't go into the court and say you're the fiction and then expect the truth is going to come your way. God will not hear you when you lie. You will carry your own liability because there's no one to back up the lie other than yourself. That's exactly what happened with Adam and Eve in the garden. The naked truth was they were naked. The minute they touched what wasn't belonging to them, God knew they had sinned. And then they turned it into something dirty. And they most likely, most likely from the evidence, God saw something that told them, or told him that they had sinned. Well, they had coverings over themselves. They had sown fig leaves. And uniquely, the fig tree 
is a tree that produces true and false seed, fruits. By chance? For some reason, we never got that in Christian 101 on Sunday school. They just happened to use fig leaves? Wouldn't it have been a figment of their imagination that God didn't know what their privates were when they tried to cover them up with something public? So they added dress. They covered themselves up. So they went undercover and God didn't know. Well, he knew when he saw that because he knew something had gone wrong when he walked into the garden and found out that they were covering up. They were trying to cover up their sin. And then out of the garden they went. No more free parking. Now they had paid parking. Do you feel you're in that same situation right now, paying for parking? This book is to teach us. And because your religious leader is not teaching you, because he's making too much money, money changing in your temple, don't blame the messenger from what's there. What we find is we're finding that the videos are becoming very inconvenient for people to listen to now because the truth is coming out. And they're going back to their preacher, or they're going back to their lawyer, or they're going back to someone in the system and going, did you watch this video? It seems to not be working well with my commerce. Well, the book of James, chapter 5, lets you know the outcome for those that concentrate on the idea of money and contracting and agreed, because you can't have a good contract without greed in there. The slapping of hands, which you were told not to do according to the book that we're reading out of already, that said, do not be surety for another. Go, so here we're going to go right in from the beginning on James chapter 1. I'm going to read right through from 1 to 5. We've done this on previous videos. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabbath. Isn't that interesting that it says it's kept back by fraud? There's only a few places in the Bible where the word fraud is used. That's one of them. Well, could you, by your own consent, be kept back by fraud by using something that's fraudulent in your name so that you never really got paid? Even though you put yourself out for hire, if you're using something that is fraudulent in your name, wouldn't that basically place you in a position you really aren't going to get paid? Because whoever's controlling the fraud can remove at any given time anything you have because you don't play by rules of truth. So God wouldn't be able to protect you, would he? But it says that God still has empathy there because... The Lord of Sabbath here is because God entered into his rest day after he made man. Man went into unrest, into occupation, to deceive his own mind. That he could actually control his destiny. Well, we know, no matter what man wants to think, his creator is always above him. And no matter man trying to go down his own journey, his creator is still in charge. And you're not in charge. God is in charge. So we hope there's clarity on this subject. Can we operate in a legal fiction with impunity? Would we get rewarded in that, down that journey? Well, according to here, the ones running the fiction, the fraud, it appears you get stolen from at the end. The hired hand gets the crap end of the stick does not get paid, 
but unfortunately that is the outcome. And the rich get their comeuppance also because it appears their gold and silver becomes cankered and witnesses against them. Maybe in the future this could be a literal phenomena. Could you imagine the gold and the silver in the vaults of the rich and all of a sudden they wake up one morning, the judgment's upon that gold and silver because it's cankered? If that is literal, that would have huge impact because for the first time, gold and silver would end up with a phenomena of rust. What worth is that at that point? Who's going to trade rusty silver and gold? So it appears they get nothing also. God's judgments are coming. No one's going to escape them. Other than those that walk in truth and accept Christ. He is king. And his kingdom is coming. Whether or not man is ready for it or not. We hope these videos are bringing more clarity to the position of a Christian.